I feel like straight women are going extinct. <laughs> Everyone's coming out of quarantine queer. It is, yeah. I just like, I really don't want straight women to go extinct because I love Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> they have amazing sales. And if straight women go extinct, they're going under. But that's the habitat of a straight woman, Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> They're also going extinct. Did you know this? When a straight woman goes on a first date with a man, she has to ask herself, is this guy going to be the one that murders me? <laughs> like, that's fucked up. That's traumatic. Like, I've never been on a first date with a lesbian I got murdered, you know, like not, like not even close, not even close. And I, I went on a first date with a woman, she had a machete in her car. It wasn't even a red flag. The red flag was that we went out to dinner and she's like, I believe in God. Yeah. I was like, what are we, six? Of course, every time I tell that joke, I do pray to God at night. <laughs> just in case, yeah. Say, dear God, it's just a joke. Lighten up. Liberals. <laughs> yeah, I was watching this video. This woman, she puts 13 mozzarella sticks into a waffle iron to make a waffle made of mozzarella sticks. <laughs> and as I was watching this video, I was just overcome with this feeling that we are very broken right now. <laughs> like we have so little time on this earth and this woman is choosing to use that time to try to make carnival food into brunch food. <laughs> And I can't stop thinking about her. I feel like her marriage is on the rocks. Martha, put the waffle iron down. The kids miss you. Fuck you, Steve. I'm an influencer now. I feel like she's very depressed is what I'm trying to say. And I mean, I can relate. I used to have debilitating depression, but now it's not so bad. Now I only have seasonal depression. Yeah, but it is all of the seasons. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, I thought that this would be a great time in history to bring another human into this world. I had a baby with a woman the way that my Lord and Savior, Melissa Etheridge, intended. Yeah. Oh, I came to her window. With a lot of frozen sperm. It's like, drink up, sweetheart. We're making a baby. We obviously, we needed sperm, we needed help, but like, that's not for lack of trying. My wife and I tried so hard to do it on our own. We did. We just scissored night in and night out. Just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We just scissor, scissor, scissor. And unfortunately, we did not make another human, but we did make a very beautiful, intricate snowflake chain that we hang up around the holidays. <laughs> they are for sale after the show as well. They smell like fish. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm sorry, I promised myself I'd write one joke. Was... We, uh, this is a little parenting advice. Um, do not follow your nanny on TikTok. <laughs> don't, just don't. Like, because you've never met someone in person and then checked out their TikTok page and be like, oh, I respect you more now. <laughs> mm. 
My nanny, uh, <laughs> she was also a pole dancer, not just a nanny. Yeah, she was a pole dancer, which I'm like completely fine with. I think it's awesome. Like I'm all for body expression and all of that. Like I'm not a conservative anymore. And I think that's, <laughs> I think that's great. You know, my neighbors were a little confused because my, she was a live-in nanny. She brought her pole with her. <laughs> And I mean, at one point we were just the boring lesbians down the street and then all of a sudden I'm getting texts and they're like, hey, there's a woman with nipple tassels sliding down a pole in your front yard. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yes, no need to fret. That's just the woman we're paying to raise our child <laughs> while we lock ourselves in the bedroom to drink. <laughs> yeah, I wish that I could be a stripper, honestly. But I have a lot of weirdly misplaced moles on my body. <laughs> it was like my dermatologist was the one that broke the news to me that I couldn't be a stripper. <laughs> that, that was a hard day for me because I love to dance, you know. <laughs> and I love cash, getting cash without having to go to the bank. It's also great. <laughs> But she was right. She's like, nobody wants to see that. I mean, you've never been at a strip club and they're like, hey, bring that mole stripper back out here. <laughs> yeah, they're just throwing dollar bills at me like, hey, you might want to check that one out. You might want to check that one out. Yeah, has it changed colors in the last year? You should check that out. You know what? Skip the lap dance. I'm going to circle a couple moles here. These are the ones you're going to want to dress first with your dermatologist. Mole comedy. <laughs> Yeah, I do know I'm, I'm a great mom, I really am, because, okay, my, my daughter was supposed to be born on September 11th, and it's just the one day, right? It's just the one day, you're like, can we not do that? I mean, she already has two moms, like, she has a lot on her plate, I'm just like, can we not have a 9-11 birthday? So, <laughs> when, I, when I was at the hospital, I was like, can we either speed this up or really slow it down? <laughs> and my doctor was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. He gave me all these drugs. I pushed and I pushed. I was like ripped from hole to hole. I pushed so hard. She was born at 11.45 p.m. on September 10th. Yeah, thank you. So obviously 9-11, we will never forget. <laughs> Unfortunately, 9-10 is my pussy's 9-11. 